Hey, hi, uh, this is Yogendra Singh uh, from FOSC uh, Technologies. Welcome uh, all of the faculty members who have joined the session. Uh, can you please confirm if you can hear me? Uh, can you please confirm if you can hear me? Okay, Sonal uh, from Delhi, Sandeep from, uh, okay, Sandeep Kumar, Vikram, Anusha, a lot of people are raising hands. Okay. Vinesh uh, from Manipal University, Amit sir from Amity. I can see a couple of memes here. <laughs> okay, uh, so my full screen is actually you know, occupied with these uh, notifications that people can hear me. Okay, fine, that's good. So uh, as this being the first day, uh, it will take around five minutes to start with. Right. Uh, generally, uh, on, on a normal day, it is starts uh, sharp at four. So, uh, okay, I can see uh, Weber as well. Weber from Manipal University. <laughs> okay, Dr. Sonia raising the hand. So, a lot of people from. Uh, multiple you know uh, cities from the india almost this time we are covering the entire uh, india people from jammu kashmir to uh, people deep uh, in the tamil nadu and karnataka people from western part of the india to meghalaya assam and you know all those uh, states uh, around uh, i i think uh, 700 uh, registrations uh, are there Okay, yeah, Maharashtra is as well. <laughs> Jai Maharashtra, right? <laughs> Thank you, Rajkumar. Okay. So guys, uh, uh, my voice is uh, pretty much clear to uh, you all. Okay, uh, even people from uh, Nepal, people from uh, uh, Bangladesh, a uh, couple of people from Pakistan uh, and Sri Lanka, they have also joined this program. Welcome to uh, all of these candidates uh, as well, all of the faculty members from uh, other parts of the world. Uh, so the people are having some audio problems. Uh, request you people to uh, click on your bottom left there's an uh, option for enabling your audio. You need to dial in the audio. Those people who are facing problem in who's not able to hear, they need to dial in the audio on the bottom left part. There's an audio icon there. Uh, uh, let me explain it. Guys, uh, if you cannot, hear the audio, please click on, you know, uh, left most icon in the bottom of uh, Zoom app screen and select uh, audio through device, right? Sylvester, sir? Audio through device? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. The first one in the, uh, the list. And those who are feeling that the volume is less, please increase the volume from your side. I have a couple of people saying that the volume is less. Request. Uh, I have also, you know, uh, set it to the optimized level. I think that now more people should be uh, uh, getting it uh, a clear audio. Uh, so, uh, guys, again, please confirm that yes, uh, this is the right uh, volume. You can easily hear me. Okay. HPW saying, sir, connected all Punjab. Thank you. <laughs> Good. So, uh, 
Sylvester, sir, can we start now? I think so. We can start, sir. Yeah, yeah. People are people are still joining, but I think so uh, because it's the first day. People might be finding some issues in joining, so okay. I think so. We can start. start. <laughs> So one of the uh, attendee from the past sessions, Rajkumar Zagdale from Maharashtra saying, sir, voice is always clear, never getting technical problems in your session. Thank you, Rajkumar. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, dear uh, faculty members, uh, this is Yogendra Singh, co-founder of FOSC uh, Technologies and uh, FOSC Coding School. FOSS Coding School is an academy run by FOSS Technologies. We are a, a startup company. Uh, now we are close to five years old company. Uh, I think completing five years uh, this July, uh, at, as per the ROC registration data <laughs> and the date. Uh, so uh, before we start for today, right? Uh, uh, let me, you know, uh, set a couple of agendas uh, so that you know uh, the journey is uh, smooth and journey, journey, uh, journey is fruitful to everyone who is joining this session, right? So. Uh, if you can see my screen, right? Uh, uh, the screen that you see has a, uh, you know, a text editor, sublime text, and it has got a couple of instructions for you, uh, all the faculty members, right? And the research scholars, the, uh, the students who are doing PhDs and, you know, AMTEC programs. This is only for uh, those people. The students are not allowed, but PhD students are allowed. Uh, so, uh, this is the second, you know, faculty development program, uh, uh, totally sponsored and conducted by FOSC Coding School. We have done, uh, you know, earlier uh, season one faculty development program that was primarily for faculties uh, from the Rajasthan state only. We are based off Jaipur, uh, Jaipur, so that was the first attempt. And this is the second attempt we are doing where we are covering the entire India. Uh, the program, the title name is Python and Amazing Trends in Machine Learning, right? So obviously uh, it involves a combination of both Python programming as well as uh, machine learning. And we are going up to deep learning, right? That would be uh, the coverage. Uh, in the beginning, so whenever you join the session, most of the time you will find my audio is muted. But we start, you know, the session uh, exactly at 4 p.m. Right, and this will happen uh, through the next five days, uh, including today. If you have any non-technical query, you know, faculty members, if you have any non-technical query, right, we have our team member Surendra who has been in contact with you, uh, the guy who you know uh, sends the uh, messages to you, calls you, probably, right? Uh, he's Surendra, right? Our, uh, you know. Uh, industry relationship manager and uh, academic relationship manager as well, right? So if you have any non-technical issues related to this program, please, you know, uh, contact on this number. Uh, the good be that if you can save this number on your phone, right? So any message which is broadcasted by FOSC team will come to you. Generally, we do not spam. You will get only the relevant information uh, related to the programs, upcoming programs and so on. So no spamming at all. So you can save this number, please. Right. Uh, along with the non-technical issues, definitely when you are doing some hands-on, right, during the program or post the program completion as well, right, uh, uh, you might have a couple of issues related to your, you know, uh, technical queries. So there are two team members here, Sandeep and Mohit, right? They have uh, the mobile numbers uh, and the numbers are on the screen, right? You can note down that these numbers as well. And they are available on the WhatsApp as well. So if you have any query, uh, uh, you, you may contact them, right? Entire training content, entire training content would be available on the Google Drive to you, right? And this is the link of the Google Drive, right? So all of the instructions related to joining the program, all of the instructions related to what you need to install to join this program, all of the content, whatever the code we write here, we would be sharing that as well. Whatever the you know a discussion goes on, uh, it is a recorded session, so you you will have the videos available. 
on the YouTube channel as well, right? So this is the link for the Google Drive. Uh, so I'm going to share it uh, with everyone in the chat window. So, uh, you know, this, this is handy for you. So you must have the access to this, right? A Google Drive, right? This is owned by FOSS. This entire program is free, but definitely all of the intellectual property rights belong to FOSS. Every content, every program, every code, every data that belongs to FOSS, but this is completely free, uh, you know, a program to join. And there are no hidden charges. A couple of people, uh, faculties, uh, you know, had a query uh, while you know, filling the registration form. The meeting link, the app you are using to join this program is Zoom, right? Uh, and the link is always going to be same. The link that you have, you know, uh, selected today, the link that you have joined today to join this program, the link is going to be same every day. The meeting ID is given there, password is given there. All of the faculty members and research scholars are requested not to start their videos, please, because that actually dilutes the bandwidth that may hamper your experience, right? Audio and, you know, the screen that is visible on your device, on your laptop, right? So I would request everyone that please do not start your video in the Zoom application. That is not required. Even we are not going to launch our videos. You will not see me. You will not see any member from the FOSC. Audio and the screen that is shared with you is the only way that will receive, that you will receive the entire training content. If you want to ask any question, right? If you want to ask any question, you have an option to go to a chat and then you may raise your queries there as well, right? So that is, and whenever I ask you for any feedback, all of you know, the faculty members, whenever I ask any feedback from you, please respond through chat window or raise your hand, right? That is also okay with me because that would be the only way through I can understand where you are getting it or not getting it. If you have any questions, please use the chat option or use the raise hand, you know, uh, option in the Zoom application. I, I think this is clear to uh, all of the ma members uh, joining this session, right? Uh, our session timings would be from 4 p.m. to 5.30, you know, uh, that would be the time where you will see, you know, uh, uh, either me or, you know, or Dr. Sylvester, and, and then we are keeping around half an hour time for, you know, uh, question answer sessions. So if you have any questions related to the, uh, you know, a concept related to the uh, discussion that day, uh, you are welcome to ask any questions related to that, right? So we are keeping a half an hour time for uh, that as well in everyday uh, case. Every day you are given a one assignment to complete right right so every day you will have a one assignment to complete right and that assignment will also be available on the google drive only the link i have shared that assignment would be available there right once you have completed that assignment you will need to upload that assignment on this link which is actually a google form right so i'm sharing this as well uh, assignments are pretty much simple. They are just to keep you, you know, uh, engaged so that, you know, uh, we can uh, reinforce the learnings on you, right? Uh, so that it is effective, you know, it is effective for you. And there is, uh, you know, a meaningful, you know, uh, engagement in the entire program. All of the recorded sessions would be available on the YouTube. So we have a YouTube channel called FOSC Coding School. I request everyone to go on the YouTube and subscribe to just this channel so that whenever there is a new video available, you have a notification, right? So this is, you know, at the fast grading school. Uh, faculties or research scholars who are not having laptops or, you know, PCs and they have only the phone, right? They have only the phone, right? still they can do the python programming on mobile phones they need to download this decoder app 
on the Android phone, right? If you can download this app, you can write the Python code on your mobile phone as well, right? Obviously, you may not have the best experience. For the best experience, you have to have the laptops or the PCs with you, right? So scholars, faculty members, professors, assistant professors, you know, so, uh, if you are have you know uh, having the laptops and the PCs with you, right? We are going to use you know uh, one of the IDs which is you know given below, right? One of the IDs which is given below, right? Uh, the IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, the tool that we are going to use for writing the code and implementing a couple of practical problems uh, in machine learning area, right? So. There are a lot of options that you can use to write the code in Python and use machine learning libraries as well. What we are going to use in the entire program would be Anaconda Spider. This is the name of the tool guys that we are going to use in this program. And let me show you a one, you know, a view of that. You know, this screen right now you see is you know, a uh, spider a screen. This is the tool that we are going to use. This is a tool we are going to use, right? So uh, I'll explain that, you know, I'll come to that part when we start on the coding and the practical aspects, right? Even if, right, it is okay. Even if you have, let's say, Anaconda Jupyter, or you have the Anaconda VS Code, or you have the IDL, IDL uh, is a, is a basic tool for Python programming, or you are on the Google Colab, right? You can use any of the tool for the practical implementation. So what we do here, but our default tool is going to be Anaconda Spider. If you have not installed, instructions are clearly listed on the Google Drive. There is a PDF file. You can go through that and you know uh, download the installer install that and it's a very you know pretty much easy process there there, there is hardly any difficulty but uh, the kind of you know the ram you should have at least minimum 4 gb ram is required otherwise this is going to create a problem for you it will not work right you are going to struggle uh, during the entire you know, five days so uh, all faculty members can you please confirm if this is okay with you right couple of you know uh, instructions to use so that we have the best experience here. I can see a lot of uh, people uh, raising the hand. Uh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Harjit saying, sir, uh, uh, everything is fine. <laughs> so, Now, coming to uh, the you know uh, profile of the people who would be interacting to you from the FOSC side, guys. This is me. Uh, this is your game, and this is Dr. Sylvester. Uh, both of us are the co-founder of FOSC. And uh, if you want to have a, a little bit of uh, you know a background about us, so uh, let me tell you. Uh, this is me, actually, a little older picture of mine. <laughs> uh, so far, it is uh, five years in FOSC technologies. Before that, I was working as a CTO with a startup company, Tharsoft Labs. It was a startup company run by a couple of NRIs from the US. Uh, before that, uh, me and Sylvester uh, working together in a company called Mango Technologies. It was a Bangalore-based company. Uh, so we have uh, done a lot of work in the C programming uh, area, in uh, mobile app development on, you know, Android, uh, Windows Phone, uh, uh, you know, Mac and all. Uh, prior to that, I was working as a senior engineer with the Qualcomm India, Hyderabad location. Uh, Qualcomm is world's largest semiconductor company. If you don't know about it, uh, the 90% of the chipset uh, of your smartphone, it comes from Qualcomm, right? A Snapdragon processor, if you have heard about it. 
uh, and then uh, before that i was again the part of uh, the team mango technologies so uh, and uh, my journey uh, as a industry guy started with a japanese company g drive software it was a tokyo based company i i joined this company as an android software developer so i wrote a lot of code in c programming on arm based chipsets so a kind of a quick overview around my profile and uh, then you have dr silvester with you uh so uh, silvester you know uh, obviously even before starting the fos we were you know we worked together in multiple companies so uh, he has been the cto of card pro solutions the bombay based company uh, the card pro got the uh, wallet license from rbi they used to run a wallet uh, so uh, good experience around you know payment gateways and all and he has been the ceo of the mango uh, jaipur office uh, so he has done his phd in cryptography so uh, this is kind of a quick overview around you know so uh, and now let me uh, close this part okay and now the story starts for you that was you know <laughs> so far uh, a little bit of gyan bagi but uh, i i think that is required sometimes so uh, let's set the agenda for five days what we are going to do right and uh, the agenda is like this so you can see on my screen uh, i'm using a, a pad so request you to also take the faqs from the people uh, which i'll come to that part a little later so uh, guys and our faculty members uh, pardon me if i uh, i say guys <laughs> so on the day one right on the day one we are going to have a very quick overview around python programming so obviously right uh, you teach python programming for uh, one semester six months right but we are going to have a python session very quickly it will take around uh, one and a half hour, hour for me to complete that and i'll cover almost everything in that but in a quick fashion right and if you are familiar with the c programming or any kind of programming background you have uh this is going to be easy for you no big deal right even if you are very new to python uh you will digest it definitely uh then uh we have a day 2 that will come tomorrow uh, we are going to talk about a data analytics what is data analytics how to handle uh the data problems and a couple of uh, important libraries that we are going to have here uh, one is most popular one pandas uh, then we are going to cover numpy and then we are going to cover matplotlib as well right so this would not be entire you know coverage we will try to cover the things horizontally rather than going very deep into you know uh, every detail because uh, we have a limited time so we want to utilize in a uh, best possible way uh, then on the day 3 right uh, day 3 will talk about you know machine learning so here it starts the machine learning i'll i'll talk about the terminology that what is machine learning what is ai what is deep learning what is data analytics what is data engineering what is data pipelining so couple of what is big data couple of things you know we'll cover everything here we'll have you know a couple of uh, 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 terminology that are interchangeably used uh, in the industry in academics as well so we are going to cover that part and here we'll have a practical you know implementations that are supervised machine learning on the day 4 we are going to talk about unsupervised machine learning so uh, machine learning has two primary types one is supervised so we are going to cover that part in day 3 and then uh, one more sub type that is unsupervised uh, ml stands for machine learning if you if you are confusing around that what is ml ml is a machine learning here and then on the day 5 we are entirely going to devote this day 5 on deep learning part so uh, that would be again a quick introduction Uh, but i'll try to cover what is ann what is cnn right uh, uh, what is rnn and couple of other things right what what are the neural networks uh, what is the architecture what is the back propagation right how it works what is gaidian descent algorithm so couple of things will happen here in a quick way but uh, uh, quick doesn't mean that you will not get anything you will get everything uh, but uh, again a very horizontal coverage rather than going you know uh, very deep and obviously uh, almost every day we'll keep talking about uh, the use cases keep talking about the new research areas you can you know uh, uh, look into 
uh, or you know any possibility of publishing a new research paper around that so whatever uh, knowledge or whatever you know we have got in, in a couple of years working on the consultation uh, in this area uh, we'll try to share with you as well right so uh, probably that may help so this is the agenda right so i think everybody must be okay with this agenda because this uh, this is completely in line with what was uh, given to you and what was you know uh, shared you on an email right so uh, that's the agenda for uh, you know uh, five days and now we have compiled a couple of queries you know uh, the faculty members or research scholars raised during the registration process so i'm not going to discuss every query but we have got a generalized you know a, a question around that and i think that will solve uh, you know almost 90% of the you know queries people had uh, in their mind and what are those queries so top uh, queries was uh, like you know the so obviously india is a certificate obsessed country so that was the first query we had uh, certificates what would be the certificate so everybody is going to get a certificate who joins the program uh, regularly right so registration is not sufficient uh, please attend uh, all the sessions regularly and the certificate is with you that's the first question uh, uh, then couple of people had a question around that whether it is going to a uh, hands on uh, or it is going to be a theoretical uh, uh, a session so we try to keep uh, you know uh, the theory part very minimal only concepts are discussed and and we keep most of the things uh, on a practical part only and in entire five days you will no, see no ppt not even a single ppt is going to run on on the screen so uh, i think that 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 qualifies this program to be practical program if we are not using any ppt right so uh, that's the uh, second question uh, then people had that uh, do we get the notes or you know do we get the recordings yes recorded videos are available on the youtube and you have the entire training content available on the google drive and the drive link is already shared with you right uh, coverage uh, or, or the agenda for five days that is uh, already uh, you know discussed and uh, then there was a question around that what is the prerequisite to attend this program I, I think uh, 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 what I can tell you if you are motivated right if you are keen to learn right if if you are uh, you know uh, having a curiosity to learn something new right then this program is definitely for you right uh, that is the only prerequisite that is required if you are motivated then that is more than anything actually right uh, there is no uh, other stuff required as such we'll try to cover uh, things from the scratch take take the things from the very beginning right so so later on uh, you know you can take them you know uh, forward uh, as per your pace and you know as per your will uh, i have talked talked about the tool that that we are going to use the tool that that we are going to use is anaconda uh, uh you know uh, spider right anaconda spider so anaconda navigator is a package right that you need to download and install and in that package anaconda navigator you have the jupiter you have the spider you have the vs code you have the r studio you have the orange tool lot of tools are available there the tool that we are going to use is spider here right and uh, then uh, last question uh, fdp recognition and affiliation with aict and ugc as such we do not have any affiliation uh, from aict and ugc right but uh, we have done you know a uh, couple of programs in association with uh, bikaner technical university rajasthan technical university uh, and other private universities in uh, you know uh, in india and rajasthan so uh, i do not think that there is any issue with the recognition of the certificate because we have issued the certificate to the faculty's member in the fdp1 as well and we hardly got any revert on that that this was not you know 
uh, given a due consideration in the salary appraisal or anything related to the performance of the teachers or you know uh, 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 in whatsoever manner uh, you want to utilize that so i i think uh, that ends you know uh, the top uh, top queries uh, what we had from the registration part uh, and if anything else uh, is with you we can discuss this uh, at the end of the program right so uh, members uh, are you uh, there are you with me to start so vrinder sir amarjot kar lot of people are raising hands <laughs> dr sorya okay lakshman tripathi from bhubneshwar himanshu shroti oh, okay that's good dr sarkar dr achit sarkar okay i get a message from dr zs bhamra uh, okay uh, you gender is going to uh, going smoothly thanks and uh, no issues so far thank you uh, dr bhamra now before we start our python journey let's uh, take a, a look look uh, on the spider part how to use this tool so when you have installed anaconda navigator right when you have installed the anaconda navigator and you launch that anaconda navigator you will see a icon right you will see a icon on that screen and that icon would be a spider right uh, anaconda spider would be there so you need to launch that you will see a launch button right you will see uh, a launch button there so you need to click on the launch button and once you have launched the spider the spider this is the screen that you are going to see this is the screen that you are going to have right and now how to use that let's see this left side window that you see here is a editor window this is the window where we are going to write our code this is the window right and i have already created a one file right with the name day_1.py all the python files are getting saved with the extension .py similarly like .c for c programming .java for java right .cpp for uh, c++ programming files we have a .py extension for python files right if you want to create your own file in the spider that's pretty much easy go to the file menu and click on this new file option right and click on this new file option now you can see guys right here you can see when you are going to create a new file through this option right you will see a file name like this untitled 0.py right untitled 0.py right and if you write something here so let me remove everything which comes by default so now you can see here right and if i say print so i have a print statement that is i'm going to print something for the first time in python and i take parenthesis and in that i write uh, a string why a string because i have used double quotes here that you can see right so i can say hello form fast so this is the first you know statement this is the first sentence this is the first string right that i'm going to print so what i'm going to do with with this and i can save this so initially it is untitled 0.py what i can do now i can save as so i go and choose save as option and i can rename this file and so let's say i say demo.py so i say demo right dot py and i can select uh, the right folder where you want to store this file and then click on the save and now you can see the name uh, has been you know a uh, uh, demo.py now now there are two ways to run this code there are two ways to run this code there is a run option and then you see a run right there is a option either you can directly click on this option as well run file you know there you can see a play kind of a button if i click on this if i click on this right whatever the set of statement this file has right the all statement will get executed 
and I will see the output on the console. So what you see on the right side, what you see on this you know, window, this window is a console window, right? And there you see the output. There you see the output. And similarly, I can write a one more statement, a print two plus three. So it is a simple mathematical expression that you can see and it should print a five. Okay, now this time I have used a different approach to run this code, right? Earlier, what I told you, that you can directly click on this. So that is the one option you can exercise to run the entire code in the given file. So here you see one print statement output here, the second print statement output is here, right? But what I did, I selected this statement, right? I selected this statement. And now just to run this code only, not the entire code, just to run this code only, what I do, I press shift enter, shift button, followed by enter, shift and enter. And now you see the output corresponding to this statement only. You can include, you know, more than one statement as well this way. You can include what? Print and then you can say three greater than two. So now I'm writing expression which should give me output like, you know, a true or false because I'm just looking for a comparison operator now. And obviously three is greater than two. So you will see the output a true here. So this is how, you know, and I can select both of these statements as well. And again, press shift enter, right? So uh, now you can see uh, the output on the console. So let me repeat again what I have done and what I've told you so far. I'm telling about how to use this tool, the spider. The first question was how to launch this tool. So how to launch this tool? First, you will need to launch the Anaconda Navigator. And once you launch the Anaconda Navigator after the installation, you will see an icon corresponding to a spider. And below that icon, you will see a launch button. Click on that launch button and you will see this screen, HPW, right? That was the first, that how to start this tool, right? And then I told you that this left side, this left window on the screen is an editor window right, where you are going to write your code and the file that you are going to use here are with extension .py. The files you have opened up, all the files you will see them in the tab here. So file that I opened in the first was day1.py. I will write the entire code here and that file will be shared with you, right? Uh, and then uh, I have another file demo.py. The same announcements what I made you earlier are written here as well. So this time it is .txt, it's not .py file, and I can close this as well. So now you can see, right? Yeah, Surya, you are right. So, shortcuts are same for Mac or Windows, right? Uh, so you need to, if you are Windows, right, uh, again, you have to just, you know, go for shift enter, right? So this is, you know, the case here. So this is a demo file that I created through an option file. Right, and then you know, uh, initially this file name was untitled0.py, right? And then now I can rename it, right? And then you can see this. Now come to this right part, uh, all the faculty members, right? The current window that you see on the right side is a console window, but this area is actually a multi-purpose area. And for that reason, you see three tabs here, right? You see the three tabs. Currently, the tab that is enabled on my screen is console screen, right? So currently, the tab that is enabled is a console screen. So whatever the code you run on the left side, you will see the output on the console. That's fine. Then we have another tab with the name variable explorer that would be used when you are going to declare a variable in your code or any data structure you are going to use, right? That variable name, the type of that variable, the value it holds, you will find all those details here in variable explorer, right? And then we have a third tab, which is files tab. What is this? If you select any folder that this is my folder in which I want to work, in which I want to save my files, in which I want to, you know, 
complete my project, then what you have to do, you have to, you know, uh, click here, guys, you know, follow my uh, uh, you know, uh, mouse action. And there you see an uh, option, browse a working directory, right? So you need to click on this. And once you click on this, you can set any directory, any folder in which you want to work or any folder that you want to open, right? So I have selected a folder with the name FDP Zoom, right? So once I have selected this folder, right? So how to go that? So let's say I go in the parent folder now and in the within the parent folder, right? What I'm selecting season six FDP. I click on open. Whatever the files are there in this directory, I will see the list here. So that means in my case on my machine, if I select this directory, if I select this folder, already so many files are there. And if you're creating that folder for the first time, you won't see any file. And now you can see as well that, you know, uh, I created a new file demo.py that is also listed there, demo.py, right? If you want to open up any new file, you need to double click here. So let's say you want to open the day2.py, double click here and you will see that file here in the editor window, right? So that is a quick overview that how you are going to use this spider tool for your Python programming, right? And whatever the files you are going to open here, you will see them in the tab, right? So this is this, you can close them, you can open them, right? And then this right side window is a multipurpose window. By default, you will see the console, right? Whatever the program execution is taking place, you will see the outputs here, right? So it's a kind of a command, you know, a terminal. CMD terminal, right? And then we have a variable explorer. We will we'll see uh, the entries here soon. And then this file stack. So these are the basic, you know, utilities. And, you know, uh, sometimes what happens if you open the spider for the first time, you may see a console and the variable explorer. Uh, uh, for the first time you open this, you may see variable explorer and files in the upper part of the screen and the Python console in the lower part. What I have done, I have clubbed all three. But you may find that two tabs are in the upper part. So they are in the you know top right corner and you will see the console in the uh, right bottom corner. So is that clear to every faculty member, every you know attendee uh, who is here that how to use the spider? Couple of maybe you know uh, already using uh, such tools, right? So uh, that, that should be fine with everyone now. Okay, okay. So Amit Hirawat sir from Amity University is there. <laughs> hmm. Now, whatever the code I'm going to uh, write here, this would be my file, right? This would be the my file. My file names. I'm closing this file as well. Demo.py. I'm closing it, and it is asking me that do you want to save uh, the changes? Yes, I want to save the changes and close it. So now you can see this. Yeah. Now, as a programming, right? The first question comes: How you are going to write the comments in your code, right? So in Python programming, the single line comments are you know. Uh, done through hash so you can see there are so many you know comments written here using hash so this the first comment you can see the second comment you can see third comment you can see a lot of comments are there right without any code yet and these all are single line comments right how to do the multiple line commenting so for multiple line commenting you know or, or all the members what you do you start with triple quotes right you start with triple quotes right and then you close the triple quotes. Whatever you write in between is a multi-line comment. So whatever you write here would be commented, right? So what I can say, I can say here, this is, you know, again, I enter and then I say uh, multi, uh, okay, I, I say multi-line comments, right? So, uh, oh, so this is, you know, 
this is multi line command how to put a multi line command in the beginning put you know triple quotes and close that with the triple quotes again right so these are the two ways only in python to have a commenting either you can have a single line comment or you can have a multiple uh, line or multi line comment right so uh, that's how you do that and now one of the most you know a uh, seen one of the most seen comment in c programming one of the most seen code in the comment you know uh, one of the most seen code in the uh, c programming you have you must have seen like this hash uh, include right and then you say stdo.h or probably you have seen math.h guys do you remember this statement this comes from c programming and the what is the meaning of this comment the meaning of this comment is that you want to include a header file in c programming and this time that header file name is math.h what are what is the use of header files they have some already written code they have already some pre written functions pre written code that you can use them directly in your code without writing those functions right without writing you know simple utility functions if you want to calculate the square root if you want to calculate the power you want to calculate the factorial you want to calculate blah blah sine cosine what kind of values you can use already pre written functions in that library the same we can do in python as well and how to do that in python that is the first statement that instead of include we have to use a statement import math this will include or this will import a math library in our python code so i'm going to select this and i'm going to run this right so this is the first statement we are going to run after the selection and how to run it shift enter right this is the way and now you can see this is the right now i want to know how many functions this library has i want to know right i have no idea what math library you know uh, is for and if i don't know how many functions it has how to you know use those functions right and for that purpose i have a direct method to know the list of functions so i'm going to use the print method within the print what i say i'm going to call a new function dir and within the dir i will say name of my library and this time this is math and now see the output on the console now see there is a list so he, you know you see a uh, uh, square brackets here in python we call this as a list right and now you will see a lot of entries first entry is there then we have a comma then second entry then we have a comma third entry and so far forget about these you know uh, double underscore methods as of now but you can use all of these methods which are given in the list as the output you can see right you can calculate the power you can check the value of pi you can you know uh, check for a uh, factorial if it is there it's, do you find the factorial somewhere yeah it's there factorial is there right uh, you can check the sqrt okay so now i after importing the class uh, after importing the library it is easy for me to find out the name of the functions that this library has using which method dir method okay fine but i don't know how to use the square root function now i don't know i want to use it but i don't know how to use that okay then i have a one more way to calc check about the specific function right so how to do that i have a print statement and this time i'm going to call the help function help method and how i would say math my library name a dot operator and after that i'm going to write uh, the name of the function that i am interested to know the more details right and let me select this line and run this and there you see the help there you see the help right and what is saying help on built in function sqrt in module math sometimes uh, called as a library and sometimes we call it as module also and now this is the way that you need to call this and while calling this with this name you need to pass a value 
right? You need to pass the x, and what it, what what it will return? It will return the square root of x. So how to call in our case? Okay, we can do this way. That I can calculate the square root of some number. So how to call that? Math my my library dot the name of the function I'm going to use, and then I will pass a value. Let's say I want to calculate the square root of 20. So how I will write it? I will write it this way, and that will give me the square of the square root of a 20, right? And if you want to use some other functions, so let's say you want to use the POW power, right? You want to use this function. So let's understand that as well. So what I'm going to do first, I need to understand how to call that. So how to check with that print, then we have a help method, then what to write math dot, then what to write POW because that is the name I'm interested in, right? And there you see the other details specific to this. And there you see, right? Help on built in method POW. And this is the return, right? So if you give X and Y to this function, it will give you X to the power of Y. So, okay, now it is easy for me to call that and use this fun function. So how to do that math dot POW. And then what I can pass, I can pass this, you know, X and Y. So let's say I want to calculate two to the power eight. So how I will write X is two here, comma. And what is the value of Y? Eight, two to the power eight. So this is, you know, I'm going to select this and run shift enter and then you see the final value. Is that clear to all of you that how to import a module or a library in Python and how to see the internal details of that module and library, right? How you can see the entire list of functions available in that library and how you can see the specific details of a function. And then we have the two methods here, DIR and help. Is that clear everyone? Himanshu Shroti, uh, Parikha Chawla ji, okay. Uh, Amanjot Kaur, Lakshminath Tripathi, Dr. Sanjay Kumar Panda, Neha Gupta ji, Ismit Rat, Amrit Kaur, Pranzil from Guwahati. Okay, a lot of people saying yes. So Archana Tomer saying, uh, without using print keyword, we can run this. Yes, you can run it that, that is fine. You know, uh, you can, you know, uh, I'm going to stick with some of the ground rules, but you can do it directly. So math.pw to comma eight, right? And again, it will give me the output as well because this is just an expression, right? And if you are going to, uh, you know, run an expression, it will evaluate to some value and that value you see on the console, right? So this is how you can do without print as well. Archana, Tomar. Now, If, you know, uh, so uh, Survi <laughs> man is saying that why it is 256.0, that means, right? That means that output is a float. That means that output is a float. If you want to know that what would be the return type of a function, what we can do, we can call a inbuilt method in Python and that is known as type. So rather than calculating this expression, if I apply type, so what I say type, and then within the type, if I write this expression, right, it will return me the type of the value, not the actual value. So now you can see, Survi, ma'am, this is float, right? And the float, you know, here you actually see 256.0, right? So when I say type, it will give me that what kind of you know, data type, it will return. I'm, I'm yet to talk about the data types, but I'll talk about them pretty much soon, right? And this is that you see. So if I don't use the type, it will give me the actual value, right? And if you use the type, it will give me the type of that value, right? Now, as any programming language, right? There is a, a very clear cut requirement that how to take, how to take input from the user. I know that using a print statement, I can give the output to the user. I can print the data, I can print the expression, I can print the text on the console and that console would be visible to the user. But how to take input from the user, right? 
And in C programming, you had a function for that, a scanf, right? Or get s. There are a couple of functions in C. Similarly, right? Similarly, if you want to read some data, if you want to take, a, you know, a input from the user, we have, you know, uh, I'll come to the data type conversion later on, Shivashish ji and Kunal. Right, so first of all, I'm going to take a value from the user. Okay, fine. For that purpose, I'm going to call a method, input method is there in Python, right? Input method. How it works, when I call input method, it says what message you want to show, the, show to the user. What message you want to show to the user. Okay, then I write, Let's say masses, enter your city name, please. So enter your city name, right? So this is the masses that would be seen by the user, right? Before he, you know, uh, types anything. When I'm calling the input method, this is the text I have given while calling. And this text would be seen by the user when we run this statement. And when the user enters something, we need to store that value somewhere in variable. So let's say I see city is equal to input. So what is the meaning of this statement? The meaning is like this. Please all you know, focus here. We have an input method. That is the method we are going to call. Okay, fine. What it does, it reads the data from the user. Okay. And while reading the data, we can show a message to the user. So that message I have given. So while this method, you know, runs, it will read a value from the user. It will read some input from the user. The user that has given an input, we need to store it somewhere in a variable, right? And the name of the variable that I have taken in this line is city. So city is the name of the variable that will hold the value, right? That is given as an input by the user. So let's select it and run it. We'll see the Part. So I'm just going to run this piece of a statement, piece of line, and here you see the masses that is shown to the user, right? And now as a user, I can write it here. What is the name of your city? So let's say I write Jaipur, right? So, and after writing Jaipur, I press enter. And now you can see, I may go to variable explorer tab, and there you see, I, I can see the name of my variable, is city and I can see the type as well and I can see the initial value as well right but I'm not going to too much focus on that section let it stay here right so now what I have told you that how to use the input method and the value that the user has given I have stored that into a variable called city and now I need to check what is the type of my variable for that I can call a function type which is inbuilt function given by Python and what I need to say okay give me the type of my variable city and then see this the type is str str stands for a string right and strings are part of every programming language. The strings are in C programming, the strings are in Java, the strings are in C++, the strings are everywhere right so this is right the type of my variable a city right and now if you remember from your c programming days if you have a string can you check the length of our string yes we have a function in c programming str len that is the function to calculate the length of our string in python as well we have a such a uh, method and the name of that method is len and if you pass the name of your variable which is a string as as of now len is a city and now it will give the length of your variable and there how come you know six because if you print city right this time I, i'm printing it on the console guys not in the you know editor window right so i can you know type the name of my variable there and i can see the value what value it holds and there you see and now you can see it is under the single quote right right it is under the single quote right so in python 
single quote is a string and python double quote is also a string i'll take example soon right so this is a string and how come the length is 6 you can see guys this j right this capital j is index 0 now i'm talking about the indexing right this character a right is at index 1 then index 2 then index 3 then index 4 and then index 5 so 0 to 5 we have the indexing and the entire length is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so this is the length of your string and this time you know we have a 6 for this i can you know define so what i have told so far right that if you want to take a input from the user which method to call for input is the method okay i'll talk about more details around that but first let's see guys here let's see this time i define a variable like this str1 is equal to fast coding school see this i have not given any data type explicitly before making this declaration so i have not used int or float or str right or boolean i have not taken any data type here because this is not required in case of python so how it decides that what should be the data type jan you know how then it decide that what should be the data type of my variable the value that you assign to a variable in python the value the kind of value that you assign to your variable that becomes the data type of the variable if you assign a float value to a variable your variable becomes float if you assign an integer value your you know variable becomes integer if you assign a string right if you assign a string it becomes a string if you assign a boolean value your data type becomes boolean right so kind of that and now this time what we are assigning to str1 that is a new variable that we are taking with the name str1 what you are assigning right now right no kunal so this time you are assigning fast coding is cool and what i have written this 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 is written using double quote that means it is a string and as it is a string the type of str becomes s str right so i can check the type here str1 so this is there you see guys you will see str right okay now let's see one more example of declaring a string this is the first example now see the another variation another flavor this time rather than using a double quote i am using a single quote there you see guys this time also it is a string that is the concept i was talking about whether you take a single quote in python whether you take a double quote in python and even whether you take a triple quote in python everything is a str so there is this time i'm going to take a triple quote although we have used triple quotes for multi line commenting earlier but if you do this way this is a str this is a string as well okay i have one more flavor for you str1 is equal to just single character in this case right in this case i am using just single letter capital f what should be the type here now you see i'm using a type method what i'm passing the name of my variable and this is str1 again this is str that means unlike c programming unlike c programming where you had you know a single you know uh, alphabet or letter as a character data type a care data type right we have everything as a str in python even it's a single letter or a set of letters everything is str in python right and similarly you can see str1 is equal to so couple of variations around that str1 is equal to double quote this time so not using single quote i'm using double quote as well and now you will see this time as well you have str data type so guys are you now familiar with all of the flavors that while declaring a string you can have a single quote you can have a double quote you can have a triple quote and even a single letter 
and Python is STR. Is that clear to everyone? All of the faculty members, please respond. respond. Aprita Banerjee, Vikram Gupta, Manish Dubey, Jaya Gangwani, I think she is from uh, Jodhpur. Okay, that's cool. So guys, are you getting uh, the things? Are you with me? Is that uh, uh, interesting? Uh, is that uh, makes you sitting on the chair? Okay, so Dr. Daneska, you're saying that is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, Shubhashish Mistra, sir. Yeah, triple quote can be used for multi-line commenting, but they at the same time, they can be used for a string. But generally, we never declare a string with triple quotes, although it is supported, right? Although it is supported, but we either use single quote for a string declaration or either we use for double quote for a string declaration, not a triple quote. That's not uh, into much practice, right? So most of the time you will see uh, multi-line comments only using article quotes. So about six, right? Now, str1, so I take a couple of examples around strings, right? So now I have again the same story, fast coding school. So fast coding school. So this is so a string now. So See guys, again, uh, a couple of people, people, are, sir, people are finding a problem in running a single statement that run cell error is coming, I think so. Okay, okay. So, uh, if, if, if you are, right, if you are finding any issue with, you know, running a piece of code, so let's say I'm selecting this piece of code, right, and when I press shift enter, this is not working, it is giving you some error. So maybe there is some configuration issue at your machine, but you can solve that configuration issue. How you can solve, if you're using a Windows machine, you need to go to the tools, right? But I'm on the Mac right now, so I will go into the preferences, right? If I go into the preferences, right? So Dinesh, uh, Dr. Dinesh Garg is saying that you can use F9 on the Windows, right? Thank you, uh, Dr. Dinesh Garg, uh, for letting us know. So Dinesh, uh, Dr. Dinesh Garg is saying that you can use F9, right? But still, if you want to set shift and enter as a shortcut key, right? Right, if you, uh, so guys, Konal from Bhavaneshwar is also saying that you can use F9 for, uh, you know, rather than pressing the shift and enter, what you can say, select the, you know, line and then press F9. That is the way to fix your problem right now. And the one more way of what I'm telling you that go, go to the preferences, go to keyboard shortcuts and go to the keyboard shortcuts, search for run selection, right? Run selection. So there you see the run selection. And when you double click on this run selection, you can set the shortcut key shift enter and then press OK. And you may need to restart the you know a spider and after that it will start working for you. So guys, there are two ways, right? How to do that? If you are not able to run your code using shift enter command, what you can do? Select the text, select the line and press F9. Very easy way, right? The other way is you can go to the tools, right? You can go to the tools, search for keyboard shortcuts, search for run selection there and set your shortcut command. It is not set actually, right? And there you can see on my machine, you can see this, this upper arrow is indicating shift and this is indicating the enter. That means my command is already set, right? So uh, in case shift enter is not working, you may try with the control enter as well. Dr. G.S. Uh, Dr. Uh, G.S. Bahamra has told me this. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Bahamra. So uh, this is the way to fix your uh, part. So I, I think uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, fine now with everyone. So what we were, we were at this line str1 is equal to, so that means we are declaring a string with the name str1 whose initial, uh, you know, value in the string is fast coding is good. So this is the done. Now, now in C programming, you are familiar with the indexing. The same indexing works here as well in Python. So let's say you want to print only the first letter from that given a string str1. So in the 
str1 you have this full length string but if you want to print only let's the first letter so how you can do that you're using a print statement you are using str1 and then you have to specify the index and how do you specify the index i have used a square bracket and there i have to specify the index by default in python indexing it starts from zero so what i can write here i can write the index zero that will give me the first character first letter from the given string str1 and that is capital f here right you can give any other you know uh, uh, you know index as well so maybe you are interested to know that what is that uh, you know uh, what is that index 2 or index 3 so i can you know say that index 3 what would be that index 3 how to find out i can go and easily trace out this is at index 0 this is at index 1 this is at index 2 and this is at index 3 so at index 3 you see s in the output i can give the range as well and i think this is different from c programming i can give the range so how i can give the range so guys see this str1 right so let me give the font a little bit str1 and then square bracket here i can give the range so how to specify the range for that i need to use the colon before colon you need to specify the start index so let's say you are starting from index 0 so you can specify this after the colon you need to specify the end index so let's say you specify 10 mind it this start index is included in the output but this is excluded in the output that means you will see the letters at index 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 then 6 right then 7 then 8 and then 9 only up to 9 only 10 is excluded 10 is not there right so uh, this is the way you can you know so i need to put a comma here so this is how that will only you know give up to 9 and that's why you can see here right so that was at index 0 this is index 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 then 6 then 7 then 8 and then 9 so last was at you know so this is right so uh, this is how you can deal with that part as well right and uh, let's okay another interesting part in case of indexing is print str1 minus 1 so this time guys <laughs> this time i'm using a negative indexing right negative indexing and mind it sometimes indexing is also called as slicing in python we call indexing as a slicing in python right so either you call it as indexing and some people call it as slicing as well right so slicing so what is their output Did you understand what is the use of minus one? It's a question for you, all the faculty members and the scholars. What the minus one says here? Yeah, Tarun Sharma. Yeah, Subhashi, you are right. So when you say minus one in Python, what we can do? We can use the negative indexing or reverse indexing as well. so what is the minus 1 minus 1 indicates the last character last letter in your string so what is the last letter so this is our last letter so this is at index minus 1 this is at index minus 2 this is index minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 and so on so this is the way we can go in the reverse direction as well right this is possible so okay what will happen if i say minus 2 here guys what you say will it print the second last character will it print print the second last character yes minus 1 is the last one right yeah yeah chand uh, say mazumdar yeah you are right so Minus two means like minus one is like you know uh, the last character minus two is the second last character minus three is the second you know uh, third last character so this is the way so this is called as slicing okay now a couple of important uh, concepts uh, again coming up right uh, we have str one is equal to uh, let's say Jaipur India so this time I change my string and str one is Jaipur India right. 
yeah subhashish right so there you see the japan now 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 see couple of you know important stuff here please see couple of things coming up on your screen right uh i can actually <laughs> i can you know uh what i want to do okay so <laughs> if you if you think from your c programming days uh, again right you had a very familiar assignment convert all of your string characters to upper case that was the most familiar assignment we used to get right convert everything to lower case convert everything to upper case right kind of those assignments we had in our c programming toy programming uh, basically right so how to do that in c programming right how to do that in c program so i want to convert every character from str1 to upper case that is my you know assignment that is my problem right now i need to find out right now i need to find out that what are the methods that i can use in a string that i can use in str right so how how to check that what are the methods i can apply in str you know uh, there is a, a method called dir and when we pass the name of our class or name of our library or name of our, our module this time we have to pass str because str is name of the class or the data type right in python so what we are saying dir str and it will give me the list of entire methods that i can apply on a string i'm not going to talk about every you know method i'll just take one or two but this is the list you can use for your purpose right so this is the way again you know dir str coming up dir is the second time i'm using right earlier i used it while finding out the list of methods uh, in the math library right so this time i'm calling dir for str right and now there is a method if you see upper guys all focus on right it's again important uh, concept coming up in python so what i can do i can use this method upper how to use this method name of my string that is str1 dot operator using upper and calling this so there is a call now see this str1 dot upper can you see in the output that every character has been shown in capital now right but hold on hold on guys right now at the same time print str1 again at the same time print str1 so let's print it there you see when we applied a upper method we got the output where every character was in upper case but applying the upper method did not convert did not change our original string our string str1 is still same what we initialized in the beginning that means the upper method is only giving you the change on the output it is not changing the original string or original string is same without any change and that's why you see the str1 similarly i can call str1 dot lower it will give me the change only on the output it is not going to you know it is not going to change my original string original string is same there you can see okay and now i have a assignment what is that assignment that i want to change this capital j right so what i have told you guys that even if you apply any method on the string those method will only make a change on the display they will change only the display string right that will only change you no know, the display string right they are not going to change the original string right and the similarly if you don't want to apply the upper and lower on the entire string you can go for indexing and choose a specific range only so let's say you want to convert the first character to lower so then how you will do that str1 and the first character remains at index 0 and then what you can say dot lower right so this will you know 
only consider what is at index zero, and that's why you see the geometry. Right, so that you know that is the case. So here you have to specify the index, right? So this is you know how the, the coding in Python is pretty much you know talking like you know talking to the computer, right? <laughs> it is not so complex what you used to you know struggle while while learning the C program for the first time, right? So this is just the case. Okay, now uh, what I was talking about that my requirement is something different now. I want to change this capital J to a small j now. I want to change this. How can I change that? For that, first I need to access that capital J. How to access that capital J? That is available on that path. So let's see. That's there. And now instead of capital J, what I'm going to replace it with a small j so I can write this kind of a statement. This is the assignment and what it does? It is just saying that index zero, whatever it already written, forget about that. What you need to write now is a small g. And guys, here is a catch. Guys, all please focus here. See, let's run this piece of code, just one line. And there you see the error. Oh, you got the error now. Type error. And what is the type error? STR object does not support item assignment. What is the meaning? str object does not support some assignment the meaning is meaning is that that strings are read only strings are read only once in a slice you cannot change them once in a slice you cannot change them and what you are trying to do here you are trying to change the string right initially it is capital j but now what you want to write over there you want to write a small j here the stuff that is read only in Python is called as immutable. We call those, you know, immutable. So Python strings are immutable. Python strings are read only. And that's why when, when you call the lower or when you call the upper or any other function, they will only, you know, change on the display. Your original string remains the same. So Python strings are read only. Python strings are immutable. They cannot be changed once in a sliced. Guys, is this concept clear to everyone that you have to understand this logic that strings are read only? You cannot change them. You cannot change them. Okay, that's good, cool. right? Now, So far, we have been talking about, right? So far, we have been talking about strings only, right? But we can have other types as well in Python, right? So let me, okay, now because you understand the initialization part, can you respond guys in chat window, if I write something like that, is is equal to 32. What would be the data type of variable age? What would be the type of, you know, what would be the type of age variable, right? This is int, right? This is int, right? So we have int here. Similarly, what happens if I say is, uh, or like, you know, marks are equal to 40.5. What is the type in this case? What do you say, guys? Obviously, this time it's float, right? <laughs> okay, that's very good. Cool, people are responding now. Okay, there is no uh, kind of a double or long kinds of kind of a concept because memory management happens very differently in Python. So don't compare with that that part with the C programming guys, right? Everything is float uh, if it is a uh, you know. Uh, a decimal kind of a representation or either it's an integer, right? So only two numbers are there. Either it's an integer, either it's a float. No long, double, short kind of, you know, uh, stuff in Python. Uh, because the memory management is pretty much, you know, different here and we are not going to talk about you know, that now. Okay, what happens if I say, uh, okay, uh, status is equal to false here. And F is capital, you know, mind it. 
So what do you say guys here? What would be the type of my variable in that case? It would be Boolean, right? It would be a Boolean and that's why you see the bool here. Bool stands for Boolean, right? And this is case sensitive, right? You cannot write something like that. No, this is wrong, right? And uh, you can write the true as well, right? Sometimes, sometimes you don't know what value sh you should assign to a variable that you are going to use in future. You don't know yet, right? That you are going to either store a string or either store integer or either store uh, you know, a Boolean value. You don't know about that. So what you can do in that case, you can take a variable, right? Let's say I say A is equal to none. So now again, you know, N is capital here. So A is equal to none means you are not assigning any specific value to this variable A, right? And this time, you know, the, if you see the type, type comes out to be none type. This is equivalent to null in C programming, if you remember, guys. This is equivalent to null in C programming, if you remember. Right? This is the case here. Okay, uh, let's uh, move a little bit now. Guys, now listen. I declare a variable right i declare a variable with something like that marks is equal to and i say uh, 56 so you can see now i am going to declare a variable with the name marks whose initial value is 56 and depending on the value i can sense the data type is actually you know uh, integer here, right? It's an integer. Now, based on the marks, I want to write a program that if marks are, you know, if marks are less than 33, I will, you know, print, you know, a fail. If marks are greater than 33, I will say pass. So, what is the case now, guys? Now this is something that, you know, I have to take a decision. I have to go for a decision whether I should print or a pass or whether I should print fail, right? So this is kind of a condition actually, right? And how to do that part in, in Python, it is pretty much, you know, easy here. So guys, for the first time, we are coming for conditional statements. How to do that? If, okay, now this is the if condition. After that parenthesis, after that, what I can do, I have to put, you know, uh, the condition here and what condition I'm looking for. I need to check whether the marks are greater than 33 or not. If they are greater than 33, I will pass. Uh, I will print pass. So I write the condition marks greater than equal to 33. And if this condition is true, what to do? If this condition is true, I press colon here and then enter. And once I enter, you can see my indentation has changed, right? Indentation is not here now. My cursor is not here, right? Where it is? My cursor is there, right? Cursor is there. So now uh, let me repeat again what I said. If, okay, marks greater than equal to 33, colon, enter, right? Okay, so now I have to come here, right? And then I have to see print and what to print here. If this condition is true, what to print? I will say print pass, right? So I will say pass, right? And I will say congrats, let's say, okay? So that's here. Else, I have to say else and colon. And then, you know, I'll say a print. I'll say what fail, right? Good luck next time so this is you know the way i have used the if else condition guys right how to use that there is an if condition then uh, there is a if keyword then there is a condition if this condition is true this is this print statement gets executed if this condition is false right if this condition is false 
what will happen this condition is false this print statement will not execute then what will execute this print statement which is part of else that will be executed so if condition is true we are here and if condition is false we are here so this is how you see the output marks are equal to 56 now so that means this condition is true and if this condition is true we only get a statement from this print right let's say i change this 56 to something else so let's say i write 23 what will happen in that case this condition will become false because 23 is not equal to or greater than 33 this will give us a false and if this gives us the false we will come into else block and in the else block we have this print statement so this time you know we have failed good luck next time uh, this is a little bit of you know i can make a little change here why to write a hard code value here i'm every time i'm writing 56 or 23 why not to take the values from the user i can take a value from the user so what to do that instead of 23 i can go for input method right so in the input method what i can say enter the marks okay enter the marks fine i run this part okay guys see this now i'm going to run this please everybody focus enter the marks and let's say this time i got the 45 so i enter the 45 and now see this please everybody see i need to check for the type right so now see marks there you see what is the type coming up oh it is giving str okay okay now print the marks here as well now you will see a very clear cut difference marks here you see marks are in single quote that means it is not a integer value it is a string right and the decisions the if else you are running they are on the integer part the marks has to be integer or float right but your marks currently are str so there are two important learnings here everybody input method will always read the data in str format mind it guys input method is always going to read your data in str format whether whatever you input it will always read your data in str format only. okay fine and if your marks are in str format you need to convert them in integer or a float format integer or float format and there comes a case of type casting right and what is the meaning of type casting converting from one data type to another data type and what we supposed to do here we supposed to convert str type to integer type now so how to do that your marks are str okay i need to convert them into integer so i need to type cast it into integer and after the conversion i'm going to store them back into the same variable right so what is happening couple of things happening here that currently my marks are str please convert them to integer and store the output again into the marks actually we can club these two lines together we can club these two lines together right right what to do i'm going with this way but i can you can see guys marks can be replaced by this statement so i just cut it from there and instead of that i place here right so now you can see i can remove this part as well so now now you can see first the input method will get called and whatever the you know, values we get from the user they all type casted into the integer and we get the things in the marks now so this is kind of a code this time we have to this time we have to you know select every you know uh, a line from marks to this and there we can enter the marks so let's say this time i enter the mark 56 i get this okay i have to run this code again I have to run this code again. So how to run this code again? So that this time I got 23. Okay, now I get the fail. So according to the if and else kind of conditions, I'm getting the output. Uh, this has become boring actually. Now how many times I have to select this and run this, select this and run this? Can I have a looping mechanism in Python where I can put this piece of code in a loop and it keeps on running, keeps on running? Oh yes, I can do that. There is a while loop for that. Okay, what is a while loop? While is the keyword okay and we want to run this piece of code keep on running right so i will write a condition which is always true so i say true that means this this piece this while loop is going to run infinitely okay fine 
and then I have to put colon, but still this piece of code is not part of while loop because you have to change the indentation because if you press column, there you see that your indent indentation has to be here, right? So, you know, I can see, uh, uh, you know, print in while loop, let's say in while loop, right? In while loop. So I say in while loop and let's run this entire code, right? So now you will see, I select every Sir, your voice is not audible. I think so, guys. There is some network issue at Yogendra's place. Please be patient. There is some network issue, guys. Guys, I'm back. So guys, can you see the code again? If you can respond, please. I, I lost the connection. Sylvester, sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So guys, what we were talking about, we were talking about that this piece of code is still not in the while. I need to change the indentation. So maybe I can change the indentation part. So now this piece of code is inside the while loop. So there you can see. And now let's run it. So using the while loop, I'm going to run it. And now we are in the while loop and now we see enter the marks. That means which, which part is getting executed. We got the first line here in the while loop. That means this print is executed. Now we are here. It is asking for me to enter the value. So now let's say I enter 45. Okay, it says pass, congratulations. Again, it is asking for the marks. Why it is again, uh, again asking me for the marks? Because it's running in a loop now, right? So now I can see 67, I again see the values, 23, I can see again the values. Okay, I can see again. Oh, I'm again stuck. How can I can come out from this while loop without pressing this red button? Is there any way through which I can come out of this loop? Yes, there is a way, right? So for that purpose, what I'm going to do, I'm going to split this piece of code again in two lines. I will explain that part later, but not now. So what I'm going to, first I'm going to read the input from the user, that is fine. And then the next line I will type cost, this is equal to this one. So now, now you can see this. Okay, as of now I'm closing this from that red, red button, right? Now see. Can you tell me guys that at line number 113, if I'm going to take an input from the user, what would be the type? We have discussed about this. What would be the type, right? If we take input from the user, STR, right? Yeah. So now let's see, let's come, please change your focus from, you know, editor to the console window guys. Let's say we have a string. Let's say we have a string like this. We are entering a marks like so 45. So this is the STR, right? And now I write a keyword not and then say not STR1. This is an expression actually, right? This is an expression, right? What is what it is going to return me, right? So just a minute, let me check with a couple of audio settings. Okay, fine. So now you see guys on the console, it returns me false. Okay, I take one more str1. This time I take 56. And check for not str1, false. Okay, this time I take str1 is equal to a blank string. Okay, blank this time. And now I say not str1. True. That means not is basically a keyword in Python and it will return me a 
boolean value true or false if there is anything in str1 not returns me the false always and if there is nothing in str1 right it returns me a true okay let me again you know talking about so uh, ashish kumar uh, ratha has said sir please repeat again okay let me repeat this part again what i was supposed to do guys where we started we are started with a concept right that how to take input from the user we got the input from the user we stored those values in the marks right those marks basically a string then we converted those marks into the integer okay fine that is okay and then based on the marks condition that if marks are greater than or equal to 33 we are going to print pass or fail using the if else statements okay that is also fine right and now to run these lines of code again and again what we are going to do we are putting these set of lines in while loop so i have put a while loop as well can you please confirm that are you okay so far with this is that clear so far guys please okay fine now i am coming to a problem that how to come out of this loop how to break this loop how to break this loop right so now i say here guys now i say here if if a string right if input is string if input so i am writing here guys if input is string that is marks is blank is blank right is blank or empty break from the loop right break from the loop break ka matlab what is the meaning of a break terminate the loop break ka matlab terminate the loop execution so we want to break that but how to break that so i have written you know i have written a condition that if your input is string right and what is the name of your input is string marks if your marks or input is string is a blank or empty break from that loop okay then how to check programmatically i will say if right if not marks break this is a condition that we are putting here that if you are getting your marks as a empty string break the loop and if your marks are not empty your string is not you know a blank you have some data there do not break that means if the user directly presses the enter button without writing anything this condition will become true and we will be out of the loop i am repeating again if the user does not enter anything and directly presses the enter button what will happen in that case in that case your marks will have nothing it will have a blank string and if there is a blank string and i now i check not marks you will see it true that means this condition will true only when your marks are blank there is nothing into there and if this condition becomes true we break from the loop right and now i am going to run this loop again now it is asking for the marks if i enter 45 that means there is something into right so now we got the i again enter the marks this time 67 i am getting the results now without writing anything i directly press the enter i do not write anything now and directly press and in that case i'm out of the loop why am i out of the loop because this condition became true and once this condition became true we got the break and we are out of the loop our loop got terminated right if you are using if only it is not required to go for else if you don't need right you may skip the else part if you don't need you may skip the else part guys can you please give me a feedback that yes you got this part that how we can break out the, the loop because as per the while condition this is an infinite loop 
as per the while condition this is going to be infinite loop and how to come out of infinite loop we had a condition that if user presses the enter button without putting anything we are going to out of the loop right so this is you know we are going to get it right so that's how we are going to do it so we have used no so now i have coupled everything right if you see i have coupled while loop into that so looping concept is there i have coupled you know the if else condition into that so that is there i have used the input method that is there there is a type casting as well right there that is there so lot of things are you know are there if if you if you remember right from that part right <coughs> yeah chand uh, chand chand saying we can do that part we'll come to that part okay now now guys see couple of you know so uh yeah arpita ma'am so guys if you remember i have not used you know uh, the parenthesis in this condition so if you do not use it is still okay right but as a best practice you can always use the parenthesis right as a best practice but if you miss it it is not going going to give you error it will not raise the error to right okay now guys now this time i'm going to use a different inbuilt data type now we are going to use a different inbuilt data type let's see what to do that see this list1 is equal to so now i'm taking a variable name list1 and this would be quite similar to what you used to do in c programming so this time i'm writing something like that 1 2 3 4 and 5 see this guys right list 1 is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 5 see this if you if you look at from c programming perspective do you find that this is a array do you guys agree that this is a array of having integer values in it do you agree with me guys that this is a array as per c programming right what we used to have array in c programming now we call this as a list this is a list right this is a list right and what is that we are going to store multiple items into that list and now see this list 1 is there right and now see the type of the list one see the type there is a new inbuilt data type list what is the use of list if you if you want to store more than one item more than one data type values right you can use a list i take a, one more example here i can take strings as well in my list so what i can take so let's say i take amar as a first item into my list akbar as a second item in my list and anthony as a second item into my list right so there are three items in my list now again the type is going to be list only so now see this type list one again a list can i mix both right can we have a different data types right so i can have some something like the list 1 is equal to 1 then 2.3 so now it is integer it it is float right it is true right is is you know uh what's that jaipur let's say this is also allowed that means list is not homogeneous list is heterogeneous right list is heterogeneous here that you can see right so couple of ways are there to define a string and now i have this list again in the picture so i'm going to use this list now please you know guys please focus this is my list one okay can i find out how many items it has yes i can go for the same function len that i use for a string so i can name my variable there you see the output 5 that means list has five items okay fine k 
can I print the first item only? Yes, I can do that. I can use indexing the similar way what I used to do in a string. So I will say zero. So there is indexing allowed as well. Index concepts are same as what we had in case of strings, right? So that's there. Now, there is a one more question, guys. I want to print. I want to print, right? I want to print the list items one by one. I want to print the list items one by one, right? How to do that? Let's see that part, right? So guys, uh, your uh, session is going to be like, you know, uh, uh, it may extend by 10, 15 minutes, but not more than that, right? It may extend by 10, 15 minutes. So please do stay with us, right? Uh, and after that, we will have a doubt session as well, right? So the class may extend by 10, 15 minutes and, you know, uh, uh, will that after that we'll take the doubt sessions or any suggestions from you know, I, I'll come to that Subhashis, right? So I want to print the one item at a time. So guys, now I'm introducing you a for loop in Python. For loop. How to do that? For each item in list one colon and then say print item. See this, guys, what I'm saying now, for each, I'm saying for each, but I'm not writing each. I'm just saying for each item in list one, print item. What is the meaning of this? When this loop runs for the first time, item is equal to one, right? When we run the loop second time, item is equal to two. For the third time item is equal to three. That means you do not need to use any kind of indexing in for loop, right? Right? In for loop, right? So this name can be anything. It is not supposed to be item every time, right? You can have any, any, anything like that. So I'm just repeating this same concept for each X in list one. This time what we do, print X. So now it will print one item at a time. So there you can see when I'm saying for each item in list one, again, it is going to working. So item or X, we call these, these, you know, uh, kind of internal variables. They are called as placeholders. They are called as iterators. What we call them as iterators, right? So when the loop runs for the first time, X would be equal to one. And the second time X is equal to two and the next three, the next four, the next five. So you do not need to manage the indexes. You do not need to manage the indexes there, right? So this is how you you do that. You can have any any name which is okay with you, right? So if you if you uh, you know uh, say uh, that you know uh, uh, for each uh, let's say uh, what you say x y z perfectly fine in in list one, right? print X, right? Similarly, let's say uh, I take this list. I take this list, right? Similarly, I take this list. And now I want to print one name at a time. How I can write this for each name. So this time I've taken the variable as name, right? So for each name in list one, what to do with this? Print name. Right, so we have seen this again, Amar Akbar Anthony one time, right? Let's say guys, right? Let's say guys, I have a question for you. Can you change this piece of code, right? That rather than printing the name, I should print the length of the string, right? that rather than printing the name, what change I should make that I get a length rather than the name itself. What change should I make in this code? That for each name in list one, print name. Okay, fine, I'm printing that. What change I can make in the code? How should I rent, uh, write the print name? A lot of people are responding, Shadab, Ashish, Atul, right. So only 
change I need to make is I need to calculate the length. So rather than printing the name, I should just print L E N name. So I can change that. So four, five, and seven. Okay. My I'm taking this list again. And guys, this time what change I'm going to make in my list. At index zero, whatever is written earlier, now write 10 at index zero. Guys, see this. If you remember, this got failed while in case of a string. Strings did not allow us for that, right? Strings did not allow us for that, right? So we have list one is equal to 10. What is there? That at index zero, write a new value 10. So now see this, is it possible here? We'll see this case. Yes, we did not see any error here, right? That means earlier our list one was like this. Now your list one is like this, where you see the 10 now. That means list can be modified. List can be changed. List are mutable. Right, the item, the stuff that can be modified is called mutable, right? Yeah, Lipika, we can do that, right? And strings are immutable because you cannot change that part. Okay, guys, let me run three methods quickly in the list. List one dot append hundred. What is the meaning of this method? The meaning of this method is saying that add 100 in the list one at the last. So now I'm going to run this piece of code. And now you can see what is into the list one. 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 100. So you can see 100 at the last. So append method would always add the item in the last. Okay. What is more? List one dot remove. Let's say three. What is the meaning of this statement? That remove three from the list. So if there is a three in the list, it will remove. So now currently you can see list one has three, but after executing this code, you will see three has been removed from the list. Right? Okay. What is more? There is one more method called list one dot insert. So if there are multiples of three, there are multiple values of three, it will remove the first occurrence only. If there are more than three in the list, it will only remove the first occurrence, which is coming first, right? So list one dot insert, what is the meaning of the insert? Yes, Ritika, original list can be replaced. It can be changed. Now we are all making all the changes in the original list only. List one dot insert is like, what is the meaning of this? That I want to insert a new item at a new index. Like, you know, so let's say, I say that insert 100 at index, insert 100 at index one. So I, I would write this way. So now it requires two information. Before comma, you have to specify the index and after the comma, you have to specify the value that you want to insert. And now you can see, you know, this so list one you can see we got an insert now couple of you know uh, you know guys you have to uh, you know understand couple of things here list can be modified first thing we can apply the indexing on the list the same way we apply on the string third thing when you say list one dot append basically you are adding a new value at the last when you say list one dot remove, this is not the index guys. This is the value you want to remove from the list. So don't assume that it will remove the item from the index three. No, it will remove the item three, not the index, right? And similarly, while using the insert, this is indicating the index and this is indicating the value that you want to insert at that index. If you want to know the more functions that you can deal with yes list starts with index zero if you want to know the more functions in the list you can call this method dir list and then you see a lot of methods right 
so guys uh, i am stopping as of now i will cover the dictionary part tomorrow i will cover the dictionary part so it got extended a little bit but i think we can close now because uh, this is a uh, 6 uh, pm now right and uh, before we go for a question answer session guys i want to take a feedback from all of you guys i want to take a feedback from all of you that how did you find the session how was the session for you was it useful was it interesting what is your suggestion please you know share your thoughts please share your feedback right and this file would be available on the uh, google drive guys right and uh, the session would be available on the uh, youtube video uh, youtube channel as well please you know go and subscribe to our channel fast coding school uh, right so lot of people are uh, <laughs> are giving uh, the feedback uh, uh, you know generally uploading of the video takes around you know uh, one or two hours right so that should be available to you uh, in the next two hours kind of this right and uh, uh, the link so link to the google drive is this guys and links to the google drive is uh this here you have the link to the google drive right so now a lot of people have started uh, giving me a uh, feedback right very interesting very interesting very informative very uh, uh, useful and interesting session is useful good as usual thank you uh, nice one and thanks a lot uh, you really useful for us very fruitful a wonderful session nice session you really did well punav yadav saying an interesting session a nice session sir uh, from yashoda kotana <laughs> uh today's assignment is uh, given in the end but i think you can skip that today because it involves a concept called dictionary and we are going to cover that part that is not covered yet so please we can skip the you know assignment for today dr dinesh gar saying la i learned a lot of things today on the spider right uh, uh <laughs> okay uh, so uh Uh, Konal from Bhuvneshwar saying the session was very interesting as programming is always exciting if taught well and you are really good in that. Okay. Uh, Vikram Gupta saying totally practical. Okay. Uh, I'll cover that Subhashis uh, tomorrow sessions right. Uh, Raksha Thomas saying thank you. So a lot of people have you know uh, uh, shared their part. So. Uh, uh kunal we have done that part where we allowed the you know people to talk but that creates a mess heavy mess right and then we stopped using that part and now we are using the chat only uh, right otherwise it creates a uh, you know really you know a dirty experience for the people who are joining that so uh <coughs> so uh, uh thanks uh, for your feedback guys and uh, now uh, we are going to have a, a qa session and uh, sylvester uh, is there uh, with you right and i'll be joining in 5 minutes right uh, subhashis misra is saying sir so far the best fdp thank you sir we are not going to uh, bore you uh, everybody right everybody who is part of the session i can comment i can guarantee that you are not going to get bored <laughs> so uh generally it happens in uh, uh fdps i have seen i have been part of that but <laughs> anyway uh, uh, don't take it otherwise uh, just a uh, you know uh, other part okay so sylvester is there please you know throw your questions to him i'll be joining back in in 5 minutes guys good evening guys so uh, there's a small announcement guys uh i was chatting to one of the faculty members and uh, i think so he must have put some query or his doubts on the chat 
and we were not able to answer him. So to set an expectation, guys, uh, we take all the doubt sessions after the class is over. Okay, this is one thing. Second thing is, you people are around 450 faculty members taking this FDP. Just imagine for a team of five people to handle 450 people, it's a huge task. So when you people send chats on our to us, our chat window, there's a there's a scroll going on. Can you people imagine? Okay. And it becomes very difficult for us to answer one by one. But we make a point that we scroll and give answers to each and everybody. So I would request each and every faculty members to be patient. Okay. And whatever your queries are, we are here to solve your queries. Okay. And uh, Okay, I'm open for queries now. If you have any queries, just let me know. Somebody asked me how to submit uh, the assignment. Uh, Loghambal S has asked how to uh, submit the assignment. Guys, you have been given a link to submit the assignment. So once you complete your assignments in the .py file, you can upload using that link. Is it clear? Loghambal, is it clear? Uh, Sudhanshu Lenka is asking, sir, today is there any assignment? Yes, there was an assignment today, okay, but we have not covered the dictionary part today, so we'll you can take it tomorrow, okay. So today's assignment has been cancelled. Yes, Pranjal. Uh, Surya is asking, what's the difference between Jupiter and Spider? Guys, both the tools, Jupiter and Spider, are from Anaconda, okay? Spider is an ID, what we are using at present, and Jupiter is basically a web-based tool. It opens in a browser, okay? Sure, is this clear? Dr. Sanjaya Kumar Panda, Panda, Panda has asked some question. I would request uh, Sanjaya, to paste this code to either Mohit or Sandeep, they will help you in solving the problems. Guys, one more assignment, guys. Uh, whenever you have some code problems, we have Mohit and Sandeep in the list today. Okay. And they are available every day when we have the session. You can write your code and give them. They will help you in solving that thing. Is it okay, Panda? Uh, Pranjan is saying from Guwahati, if there are two similar elements in the list, how to remove a selected specific one? Uh, you can use delete. There is a delete operator. You can use that Pranjan. Okay, remove will not help you help you solve your problem. Guys, I would I would I would like you to tell that if you want me to ask any answer your questions, please put on my chat, Doctor Sylvester Fernandez. You can put on my chat, then I'll be able to solve all your problems. Thank you, uh, GS Bambra, sir. Uh, Amit Kumar Sharma from Christian Eminent College, Indore where I get assignments on WhatsApp or on chat box. Assignments are there in your daily file. Okay. Somebody has asked, can we use Jupyter for designing form? Yes, you can do that. No issues. Chitti Nigam has asked, interesting, but I have a question. How is memory managed in Python? Uh, Chitti Nigam, the memory management is different from C. Okay. So it's not the C way. You can compare this with Java. The memory management in Python happens similar to Java. Okay. Atul Kumar has asked when ML will be started. 
ML will be started from tomorrow, day after tomorrow onwards. Today is Python, tomorrow is analytics, and then the Python machine learning starts. Pradeep Kandula is asked, when will you start deep learning and neural network? That is the last day, Pradeep. Uh, Biplav is, is asking, is there any Google Classroom for the same? No, there's no Google Classroom. We are not using that tool. Anjali Pandey has asked one question as I'm using idle, will I be facing any issues in data? Yes, yes, Anjali. We would request everybody to install Spider if they want to match with what we are doing. And if you people want to be a data scientist, scientist that is the tool what you require. Somebody has asked Amrinder, which is more efficient, MATLAB or Python? Both have different uses, uh, Amrinder, okay? In education, uh, academy, a lot of people use MATLAB, but in industry, nobody use MATLAB, they use Python there. There's, Namrata, there's no assignment for today. We have postponed the assignment for tomorrow, okay? Uh, Deepti Dash is asking, sir, will we implement COVID-19 data? No, we are not using COVID-19 data, Deepti. You can, you can make your own assignment and use that data, no issues. Pradeep is asking how to travel backwards in a string using negative index. You can use a negative index, Pradeep, okay? And it's like a reversing of the string, you can use that technique there also. Yes, Kritika is asking web development using Python. Yes, web development can be done using Python, using Flask. Uh, there are other libraries also like Dash and Plotly. You can use that for web development also, okay? And Django is the best library to do web development in, in Python, Kritika. So, Sudhan Shu is asking, from where you can download today's material. We have already shared Sudan to the Google link. You can refer to that. Punjab is asking how we reverse the string. Uh, if you want to reverse the string, you can use the, the reverse indexing way. Anjali Pand is asking, uh, uh, you, can you give a brief idea of usage of Google Colab using Spider? See, they're both are different, Anjali. Colab is different from Spider. We will use Colab in the last day, day five. Is it okay, Anjali? Biplav is asking what operations can perform using list. You can, you can use a DIR function, Biplav. You get all the functions which is there in the list. Is it okay, Biplav? Pranjan is asking, is Python an interpreted language? Yes, it is an interpreted language. Namrata is saying, thank you, sir. Very informative session with an absolute pace that we can practice simultaneously. Thank you, Namrata. Pranjan is asking, is Python? Yes, Pranjan, it is an uh, interpreted language. Yes, p uh, those people who don't have any doubts, they can leave the session, no issue, okay? Pranjal, don't uh, uh, ask the question again, again. I'm taking one by one questions, okay? You people are 450 people, I'm I am alone. Just imagine that. So give me a little, have a little patience, okay? Yes, Anjali, you can opt for data analytics. Ambuj will, will share the feedback link tomorrow, no issues, okay? I think so, Vipul, nobody uses MATLAB in the industry. If you're using, if you want to use for your academics, you can use MATLAB. Nobody uses it in the industry. They all use Python or some other tools. Tarun is saying, I'm using IDLE and I've installed libraries like NumPy, Matplotlib and Pandas. Okay, yes, it is okay, Tarun, no issues.
uh, Satveer, you can solve this problem. I have already uploaded a, it's, it, this is known as a run cell error. You can refer to a PDF which I have in the share, okay? Anjali, you can use any of the IDs, no issues, whichever you like. Priyanka, when the session is over, then only we'll give you all the information, no? So once the session is over, we'll share all these files there. Thank you, Puram. Puram is saying, thank you, sir. It is really interesting session and all organizers doing well. Thank you, Puram. Uh, no, Gayatri, uh, we need to use version 3 of Python, not 2 version. Okay, you don't have to use the 2.7 version. Okay, you need to have a higher version. Yes, Neha, this is the this is the link. Bitly FOSS free six drive. Uh, the attendance is taken automatically, guys. Okay. You can use Jupiter Anjali if you want. Guys, there is no assignment for today. We have postponed that assignment for today. Yes, Poonam, you can leave. If you don't have any doubts, you can leave. If you have any doubts, you can put that on my chat. No issues. Thank you, Dinesh. Somebody has asked, Ritika Sokte has asked, Sir, can we use PyCharm? We don't recommend Gayatri to use PyCharm, okay? Dr. Kaushal, it is still not shared. Once we close the session for today, we'll share it. Thank you, Shudanshu Lenka. Guys, if you have any queries and doubts, you can put on the chat, on my chat. Yes, yeah, Sanjay Jamwal, you won't be able to, it's very tough to do your homework on your mobile. Okay, I would recommend you do on your laptop. Thanks, Naveen. Yes, Lekha, PyTestLet can be used to, uh, to detect handwritten text. Amrutshu Parigrahi is asking, is there any session for implementing some of the primary ML algorithm by using Python? We'll, we'll teach you that, um, uh, Amrutsha. Amrutanshu, we'll teach you, okay? And in Python only we'll teach you, not in lab, mat, MATLAB. Chinmay Raut is saying, thank you, sir, for resolving the queries for, and for such a nice, thank you, Chinmay. Amrutanshu, is this okay? Deepshika, can you put your question again?
Yes, Debashis, we use the email ID for uh, checking your attendance. That email ID needs to be same. Your Zoom ID, email ID and your registered email ID with FOSS. Yeah, Deepshika, uh, there is a PDF on the Google Drive. Run cell error. You can refer to that PDF to solve this problem of yours. This is known as a run cell error. Is it okay, Deepshika? Minakhi Rao is saying, session is very informative and covered all the basic level. I am finding difficulty in insertion part. Minak Minakhi Rao, you can take help of Sandeep or Mohit. They'll help you. Yes, remove and pop does the same thing. You can pass an index in the pop. Yes, Amit Kumar. Ritika Sopti is asking attendance. Ritika, we have an automatic attendance system. Don't worry. When you log in and when you log out, we, we check your time, how many time you have spent on the login. Okay. And how many minutes you have attended. And we do a attendance for that. Rubel Gill will, will take list comprehension. Don't worry. It will be covered. Dr. Kaushal, you, you need to fill the form. I cannot do it from your chat. Okay. Neha, a lot of the other materials is uploaded on the drive, but today's day one PY file is not yet uploaded. After the session, it will be uploaded. Thank you, Vipul. Vipul is saying really impressive work and good coordination by team. Nice, excellent session. Thank you, Vipul. You can re-register, Kaushal. With your new Gmail ID. Neha is saying the session is really informative and especially not boring completely. Yes. Urvashi is saying really knowledgeable. Thank you, Urvashi. I would request you people to go and search the YouTube channel of ours, Fast Coding School, and subscribe to it. So, what happens whenever I upload the video, you'll get an intimation for it. Okay. Yes, I know, Neha. We know usually how an MTP is conducted PPT, PPT, and PPT. We don't follow that rule. You will never find a PPT in our sessions. It's all live coding. Neha. Ritika Prohit, please update your email ID. Re-register using your Gmail ID. Whatever Zoom, Zoom email ID are using, your same needs to be in your registration form. So I'm back, Dr. Sylvester. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think uh, the people who are having uh, any questions are left in the session, uh, right? So there, there, there is a comment from uh, Vijay Nag uh, Tangirala uh, saying Python earlier called as a scripting language. The Python is still a scripting language, Vijay. Right, it's still it is a scripting language, and the Python is used. You know, if you talk about that, you know, what are the three, you know, primary areas where Python is uh, is being used? So, if if I talk around that part, uh, so maybe I can, you know, uh, give you an idea that if you talk about the Python uses, right? Uh, first of all, right now. Python is the most popular programming language across globe in developers community. In developers community, this is the most popular programming language as of now. Right? And how 
you know you can claim that this is the most popular so you can go on stack overflow and you can see the 2019 survey on stack overflow so stack overflow is a very, very you know a popular uh, a site uh, where you have lot of you know questions and answers uh, on the technical topics so people you know ask questions and then lot of people answer those questions so that is the site stack overflow right and basically it is a lifeline of the developers in any company right whether you are in google or in fosk everybody uses a stack overflow right so as per 2019 survey uh, the python is the most popular and there are three areas where python is most used right uh, the one is uh, the case where we call the python is used in data science domain right so we talk about data science or you talk about machine learning or you talk about deep learning or you talk about ai or you talk about analytics right all of these terms are interrelated and python is used heavily initially it was a language called sas that was used after the sas the r became more popular than the sas and now python has become more popular than r and maybe future belongs to a new uh, you know uh, uh, <laughs> a language that is called julia <laughs> so maybe you know uh, we can see you know languages like julia soon in this domain but as of now this is there so we are you know at present here right so this is the case uh, the second use of python is uh, in automation right so what is the meaning of automation like you know uh, replacing some manual job manual activity you know which involves a uh, uh, human intervention or human involvement can you do that uh, through a software or through a you know a tool uh, right that is written in uh, any scripting language maybe javascript maybe python so automation you know so mostly automation is done the companies for testing purpose right testing the software testing the device you know kind of that automation is there the third use of python that is very popular nowadays is the back end development so this is related to the you know web development and when you talk about the web development basically it goes into two sub categories the front end development and the back end development so front end development talks about like you know using html css javascript kind of you know uh stuff to create the view you know what you see in the browser is front end and what is uh, at the server side right that is called as back end and there people use php people use you know uh, c++ people use uh, c sharp people use dot net kind of that but now people are using python at the back end and their pop popular libraries are their flask and django right these are the two uh, libraries d is silent here so we call it as a django flask and django right these are the two most popular uh, uh, you know libraries uh, through which you can create uh, the back end you know uh, uh, logic server side programming can be done so again python is there so python has got heavy uses in the industry now and people in the research field are also using you know python and uh, uh, dr silvester recently told me that andrew nj if you know uh, the name right uh, he runs a very popular course on coursera uh, on machine learning uh, earlier he used to do uh, uh, the implementations using octave or matlab but now he is using python for the same implementation so now he has also moved uh, from you know uh, now he is not using matlab or octave octave is the open source version of matlab matlab is actually you know a license based tool uh, so now he is using python as well vijay i think uh, that should be you know uh, informative to everyone other you know every other who is who is in the session right now Uh, any other questions from you uh, uh, all the faculty members and research scholars if you have any suggestions as well not uh, not only in terms of giving the feedback that how we are doing if you have any suggestion to share with us please you know uh, be open and uh, we we take the you know feedbacks very sincerely you know uh, very seriously uh, because that is the only way we can improve right
Thank you, Vijay. Any, any, any feedback? Atul Varve, Ayushi Pandey, Bhavna Trivedi, <coughs> Bulbul uh, Mewara, Dr. Vandana Dubey. There's a lot of people in the room. Still, there are a lot of people. Amelda Roslin. <laughs> I think there was one guy from Pakistan as well, uh, Professor. I, I, I think I missed his name now. Uh, and people from Bangladesh as well. Uh, I don't know if he's still there or no. Uh, Shada Pasha saying any online course of Python. Uh, Shada, our uh, uh, one free program on Python is coming up in, in month of uh, June only. In mid of uh, June, it will start. It would be a five days program on Python. You can join that Shada. It is in more details, right? So generally, Arun, uh, what you are saying that yes, FAQ is sent privately, uh, but uh, like uh, we discuss it in public. So whenever we get a question, we, we you know, uh, read it loud to everyone so that everyone can understand that part as well. We have allowed, you know, the public, uh, you know, uh, attendee to attendee checks as well in the past, but they, they create a lot of noise, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, discipline related issues. So we have stopped uh, that way. Arun. They, they make the session, you know, uh, you know, kind of highly ineffective. That makes that entire session, you know, of no use. Sigma Nayak. Any anything? No, Omesh Tamar, Purvi. <laughs> I'm just taking a couple of names randomly. So if you have any anything to share with us, uh, please do share. So I think Sylvester, sir. Now we can you know close close it for today, and uh, we'll be right back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Guys. Yeah, there is one more announcement, guys. There are a lot of people who have given a different zoom id and the registered ids are different it will make your attendance a real problem so i will request that those people who have a different zoom id and a different registered email id with us please share the same with surinder on the whatsapp okay we will try to update at the back end for you people and regarding the videos and the sir, sir request you to please save the uh, uh, file.py file yeah i'll just see okay so after the session is over guys it it takes at least one hour to upload the video on youtube i would request each and every participants to go to the youtube channel of ours and subscribe and keep so what will happen is whenever the video gets uploaded you'll get a notification automatically so you don't have to again uh, go and search for the videos. Okay, it will be helpful for you, you people. So guys, if you don't have any questions, then we can uh, end the meeting then. Yeah. Or if you people have any question, you can put it. Otherwise, we'll end the meeting now. Okay, guys. See you tomorrow. Same time, 4 o'clock. Bye. Bye-bye, guys. See you soon.